Hey, hi everyone. This is Srini here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we are going to focus on the senior automation engineer interview questions. And I'll be covering three questions from Java as well as I'll be covering three questions from Selenium as well as Locators. So stay tuned and do watch the entire video. And if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications of my upcoming videos. So let's get on to today's topic. So this is going to be a senior automation engineer interview questions uh, video. And let me get on to the Word document. So I'm going to draft it completely from scratch for you all. And I'm going to explain as and when I cover each and every topic. So first of all, when you're applying for a senior automation engineer, okay. So what is the important part which you need to keep in your mind is that what is the JD about? Okay, this is a very key aspect which most of the candidates are not able to recognize. And often they do apply for jobs in LinkedIn or Nokri or any other job portal for that matter. But what they don't look at in detail is that are they having skills mentioned in the JD? That is very important. Is it matching with your resume, right? That is something which they have to first check. Okay. So before we get into the interview questions, this is the one important tip which I wanted to give you all is that not just that your resume should be ATS compliant and have the important keywords, but it should also cover your, it should cover. So your resume should cover all important skills which are needed for the job. I'll take an example. Let's say a job is having a particular posting that it requires an engineer from four to six years experience and have automation experience of at least three years plus. Right? So this is what we are talking about, a senior automation engineer profile, which is that particular person has at least three years plus into automation testing. Now, what is important to hear is that what are they asking for skill sets? They might be mentioning Selenium. So this is one of the skill. Okay. They may be mentioning the tech stack. Like they may be mentioning the language as let's say Java, for example, or it could be C sharp, right? It could be Python. So depending upon what is mentioned in the JD, you have to look at whether you have the skills required in order for you to be shortlisted by the respective company, right? So the language matters, the Selenium uh, automation tool, which I'm talking about is the automation tool is Selenium. Then do they need any rest assured or any API automation experience? That is also another thing which you need to check if the JD is mentioning that. And if you have it matching to that, right? So based on all these things, similarly, there might be CICD requirement where you would be expected to have Jenkins, Docker, Right. Then there will be some expectation of cloud tools experience where you may be required to have experience with AWS or GCP or Microsoft Azure. Right. So these are the popular cloud tools which we are having in the market today. Right. So these are the important skills which uh, any particular automation engineer today, when they appear for interviews or they want to get shortlisted, they definitely need to have as a part of their profile be it a senior automation engineer or an automation lead or an automation architect. As you move up the ladder, you would definitely need to have all these experience, okay? Jenkins, Docker, as well as Git. So these are all the tools which is required for a person to have experience in, in order to get shortlisted. Now let's get on to the today's uh, topic. Like what all questions you can expect in an interview. So one is the most popular thing, which is a very common question. Uh, tell me about yourself and explain your experience explain about your experience in brief now why this is a very straightforward question which will be expected in any interview is because the interviewer does know about the candidate from their resume but they are you know too lazy enough to go over the entire resume they just look at the skills on a high level and they say, okay, this resume is shortlisted because they get so many resumes over every day, right? From different, different job portal websites, right? So they would not have that much of time to go through each and every bullet point mentioned in your resume. What they would be looking at is, are the skills which they need as a part of JD, are they covered in your resume or not? If so, yes, congratulations, you would be shortlisted for the next round. That is the important part which they look at your resume. Now, what they are expecting out of this particular question in the interview is that you explain about your experience and moreover on the automation perspective and tell like 
what all tools you have got experience with. So you need to mention about tools. You need to mention about programming languages. And that's all. You don't have to go that much in depth. You just have to explain on a high level. This is the first question. They would expect you to answer, right? Second question is that they will talk about, explain about what is your daily roles and responsibility. So this is another important thing. They are trying to judge, like, do you have the relevant experience which is required for this particular position? Now, why this is so important is because let's say you are explaining what you do daily basis, right? Let's say you talk about your day-to-day rules and responsibility to day responsibilities like whatever you carry out and then they would try to match with their expectation what is that they are expecting if it is matching or not so you have to mention it crisp and short and talk about your experience so let me mention like how i would be able to answer this question so i would say i'm playing the role of a senior automation engineer in my project and the responsibilities i carry out in my project on a day-to-day -day basis are so i will say i participate in the agile process and our project is a bi-weekly scrum model so i'm talking about what all things i'm working on right model and i play individual contributor role okay this is how you need to talk about individual contributor role what all things do you do so i'll mention that so i participate in the grooming meetings i participate in grooming meetings scrum calls right what all things do you do you participate in grooming meetings you participate in scrum call as well as you are involved in basically uh, clarification with the product owner if any uh, requirement clarification is required you are in calls with product owner for the same right and you would be also involved in like retrospective meeting right that is once the sprint is over you will be also involved in the retrospective meeting as to what went well what went wrong and how can we improve and so and so right and also most important thing is a sprint estimation meeting like when you're participating in a sprint estimation meeting you would be able to estimate or do the story pointing right so these are very important points because it tells that you have got an in-depth knowledge about the process. That is the agile process I'm talking about in this particular point. I'm just talking about very high level bullet points. Third point which you have to tell is that I create manual test cases then and get them reviewed with dev Other stakeholders. Okay. I automate feasible test cases, feasible manual test cases, and ensure the regression suit is updated from time to time. Okay. So basically, what we're talking about here is that you automate the feasible manual test cases, and you keep our you're keeping on updating your regression suit. I monitor the regression and ensure they are stable and running on a daily basis. So what are we talking about here? We are also talking about Jenkins now, right? So we talked about the manual part, the agile part, then we came on to the automation scripting and execution. And now we are talking about also monitoring that from Jenkins, right? And another important thing which you do is I create a uh, pull request for merging my feature automation branch with the main branch and seek approvals from my reviewers and approvers. Right. And another important thing as a part of this, what do you do? I troubleshoot. I troubleshoot in case of any issues and ensure the branch when merged is free of any merge conflicts. Okay. So you're also talking about Git here, right? So what all have you covered? You have covered Jenkins, you have covered Git, you have also covered the agile process, you have also covered the automation scripting part, 
and you also you have also covered the feasibility study as well as the automation scripting execution all of your day to day responsibilities are done that's it so that's all you need to talk about okay so these would be your day to day responsibilities as a senior automation engineer now you would be asked about what is your programming expertise when they asked you the first question right tell about your tech stack and your skill set so let's say you have mentioned about java so then they will go deep into java so they would pick up that language whichever you have mentioned it could be java python c sharp it could be anything so they will go deep into it so you have to prepare for the same so first of all they will be going for theoretical questions so for a senior automation engineer they would start with theoretical questions because they want to know if you are theoretically sound and you are well versed and then only they will go into the practical part okay so let's discuss about the theoretical questions which you can expect for a java so first important thing is they would ask you about the oops concepts okay so when they ask you about those concepts you should be crystal clear on what to answer so you would be talking about class objects then you be talking about method overloading right method overloading and method overriding so this is nothing but the polymorphism right they will not be asking you to go in detail but they will expect you to answer this question on a high level like how i am just writing down you need to answer that on a high level right then abstraction encapsulation right then what else right so these are the most important things which you can basically know about and you should be able to answer okay now in case if they go in depth because whenever you answer some question to most of the interviewers they have a tendency to go into depth okay so let's say they go about asking you can you explain me about polymorphism right so you would be expected to answer what is method overloading what is method overriding right so you have to give a one liner explanation of the same with an example so i'm just going to write down in a bracket here explain one liner with an example and preferably try to write it okay preferably try to write it because that will be giving a good impression to the interviewer that this candidate knows coding as well okay same for the method of writing so let's say for example they ask what method overloading so method overloading is what method loading overloading is basically like two methods have the same name okay but their return type okay so basically like uh, their return type the parameters basically let's start with parameters what the parameters number sequence or data types would be different okay maybe the number of arguments or the sequence of that or the data types could be different but they have the same method name okay same name is present okay now let's talk about uh, method overriding right method overriding this is method overloading by the way so method overriding is basically like right? method would have same name but different implementation different implementation here we were talking about the body will be same method body would be same but here the method implementation will be different they will have same name and signature signature means the parameters etc return type all would be same same but only the thing would be different will be the implementation part and the common example is subclass overriding parent class or super class let's say super class so the body is going to change so likewise so likewise we will be having few different theoretical questions asked in java so i'll be creating a detailed next second part of the same in my next tutorial session and then i'll be going on to the selenium part so stay tuned for my next video thank you so much everyone and please subscribe to my channel if you've not done yet thank you so much